What's up, pals? It's your buddy Brian here, and I'm back to give you my take on some of the stories from the latest issue of Seven Days. Well, school is back in session, which might be especially bad news if you're a student of color attending school in Milton. Parents say the district has either ignored or not properly handled a range of racial allegations, including complaints that students repeatedly use racial slurs towards one another. In fact, there was one instance where a student was suspended after she herself was called a racial slur. Now, racism can be an uncomfortable conversation for many, so to help us navigate this topic, I've invited onto the show our own race specialist, Dr. Horace Wallace. Dr. Wallace, do you think Milton schools properly handled the situation by suspending a girl who had just been called a racial slur because she allegedly became aggressive? Hell no! How can you expect someone to be talked to like that and expect them to react in a rational way? Now, one question I frequently see in our wonderful comments section is, why is it considered socially acceptable when members of the African-American community use that word towards one another or in music, but not when a white person says it? That word was given to us by slave owners. We did not choose this word. Using the word as a way to show solidarity to our brothers, we have turned something negative into a term of endearment. When white people say it, it's a term of degradation. Now you mentioned the topic of slavery. What would you say to people who say, you know, the past is the past. I never owned any slaves. Why can't we just put that all behind us? It's hard to get over slavery when we have monuments and statues that glorify the people that fought to keep slavery. We even have rebels here in South Burlington fighting for a Confederate mascot. Well, Dr. Wallace, there are some people, including the president, who feel that removing statues and monuments would mean erasing history. I mean, what do you say to that? Think about what these questions mean, Brian. Telling us not to get upset when we're called a racial slur. Telling us not to use that word. Telling us to forget our history while you build monuments for yours. It sounds like the only heritage that's being erased is mine. You know what that's called, Brian? Stupid? White supremacy. And it can kiss my black ass. Well, Dr. Wallace, thank you so much for coming on the show. I certainly learned a lot from you, and I feel like they could really use your wisdom up in Milton. <laughs> Fool, do you think I'm crazy? I wouldn't be caught dead in Milton. With all those racist ass kids running around, I'm better off being at home with my lady watching some Netflix, you know? Well, this week in stupid politics, there is a new and improved version of a website devoted to Democratic gubernatorial candidate James Ellers. This one is centered around a series of social media posts he allegedly made that are rather unhinged and he lashes out at people he disagrees with. The website seems to suggest that these posts prove he is unfit to be Vermont's next governor. Wait, unhinged social media posts lashing out. Why does this sound so familiar? Oh, right. Oh, I get it. The real purpose of this website is to endorse James Ellers for president. That's probably pretty flattering, but when you think about it, the governor's race comes first, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to get experience in the state government before seeking the highest office in the nation. I mean, the last thing you'd want to do is have your party nominate someone with no public service experience whatsoever, right? Because what happens if he gets elected? That would be really, really bad. Like, shattering low approval rating records bad. Well, to be clear, I'm in no way endorsing James Ellers for governor. It's way too early in the race. In fact, a 13-year-old boy from Bristol just announced that he's also running, and while that might be too young to have any real experience racing cars, he's Definitely more mature than I was at that age. Or twice that age. Anyway, strap in Vermont. This race is getting fun already. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Thank you so much for watching. And please tune in again next time because we got some more Seriously coming your way. Bye. Positive boss, boss of the house. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it.